Hello. Hi. How are you? Thank you, Raiko. Thank you, Kirschwim, for bringing me back to Dokutech. It's always great to be in Kosovo. It's a really, really cool country. Hopefully, the votes are also very good. And, uh, um, and we come back as well next year. Um, I heard a lot of great talks. So the talks were amazing, all about social impact. And I also believe that games can do this, not that they change with the artist, that the medium is changing. I think we also can change the world with video games. So we do the festival. Oh yeah, Amaze is uh, established in 2008. We are celebrating authorship of, uh, video, in video games. And uh, we do this in form of magazines. We also grabbed some magazines and as well in form of festivals and pop-ups, something like what we do here at Dokotesh. So, HyperTalks. HyperTalks are presented by Amaze. And we have five speakers and we have five minutes. And the first speaker is going to be Francisca Zeiner. The second one is Mentor Pacquarada. The next one is Maestro Simon Pivetta and Agnesa Beluga. And then it's me. Hyper, hyper, I would say. So, first, I mean, it's a very, very fast talk format, and it's, uh, people love it at the Maze Festival, so we usually have 10 talks in kind of one hour and uh, five minutes. Everybody does whatever he wants, brings some slides, five slides, one slide, just a stand-up, like Agnes is doing a video performance because she couldn't be here. So um, please welcome on stage Francisca Zeiner. She's a game designer and she did a wonderful workshop at uh, X Portal just today. So please welcome Francisca. Hello. Um. Hi. Um. As Torsten said, uh, my name is Francisca and I'm a game designer and magazine editor at Amaze Magazine. And today I want to talk about personal games and why I think we should be making more personal games and what is so special about those games. And um, my definition for personal games is uh, that it's games about very personal experiences. So um, games about relationships or love, games about uh, personal struggle or loss. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, I actually want to start by talking about a couple of games that I've made myself. So, top here you have a game called Social Me, which is a um, experimental adventure game about um, social media as a medium of self-expression. And players basically, um, they chat, they chat with friends, they chat with strangers. Um, you can listen to music, you can watch some porn if you want, or you can just dig through the trash of that um, desktop interface. And all the content in that game is um, sourced from my own chat conversations. It's um, asked friends to, uh, to share their chat histories with me and I incorporated it in that game. And what I found really interesting about it is uh, when I observed players playing that game um, was that um, especially people my age who, um, you know, the, we grew up with ICQ and the internet was new and we overshared things on chat and everything. When players played it, they they kept on laughing, they would feel really embarrassed at some point because it was, they could relate to it in some ways. Um, another game that you can see up here, it's called um, Kiss Me Maybe. It's a competitive kissing game um, in which your goal is um, to kiss as many boys as possible before the bar closes. Um, you're trying to avoid falling in love or going home with someone because then obviously you lose. And that game was inspired by um, a game my friends and I played in high school. It's maybe a little <laughs> embarrassing. Um, down here you have a game um, called Spies and Speedos and um, it's a first person shooter game set on a resort island for really buff men and you're trying to find a Swiss target, um, trying to shoot him in the crotch, I'm sorry. Um, you're listening to audio cues and it, um, the game was inspired by this frustration of um, the representation of women in video games because it's overly sexualized and I don't see myself in that so I wanted to make a parody of it. Um, and down here you have a game called, um, what was it, single player, I'm sorry. Um, it's a game about um, thinking of what Tinder is like if you would play it in real life. So you swipe each <laughs> other and you get an instant reaction. And I, I think it's safe to say that I'm the worst, uh, one of the worst people on Tinder because I've yet to have my first date. I barely have any conversations. So I think um, 
that's what played into my motivation for that game. Um, but let's talk about a couple of other games that were made by um, really interesting indie game developers. Over here you have um, Coming Out Simulator by Nikki Casey, and it's basically a game about um, the conversations that they were having with their friends and family while they were thinking about coming out to them, and it was um, their parents were or are Asians and um, rather conservative maybe, and just the struggle that happened um, or the thoughts that happened. Sorry, my voice is breaking. <laughs> um, up here you have um, Consume Me by Jenny Jiao Xia. Um, and it's a game, it's a personal game about um, her relationship to dieting and or her, her um, well, the process of dieting and how that changed um, her relationship to her body and um, her relationship to food, which I find very interesting. And down here you have a game called um, That Dragon Cancer. And That Dragon Cancer is actually uh, it's quite interesting. Of um, it's it's basically about um, the Greens family, who's um, the family who created that game, and um, how they dealt with the loss of um, their son Joel to cancer. And I found the reaction of uh, to that game very interesting, because um, basically when that game came out, um, it got a lot of positive uh, review, um, but it also got a lot of um, critique because the family was using religion to overcome grief. Um, and that was the way they dealt with um, loss. Um, however, a lot of people couldn't relate to that. And I think um, that's a really interesting point because um, all of those games that I just talked about, maybe you think they're funny, um, maybe you think, maybe you want to play them, um, or maybe you can't relate to it at all because, uh, well, you haven't had that experience. But I think that's besides the point because personal games about, are about your own personal experience. Um, so I think uh, what it ultimately leads to is that uh, we need more personal games. We need more games about, um, sorry, about loss and um, dealing with grief and that kind of thing. That um, when you make your game, um, maybe you have a different way of dealing with it. You don't use religion, but you can make a game um, that more people can relate to. Um, so what I would like to encourage you is um, to all make more personal games about your personal experiences that um, there is something you can relate to um, that other people can relate to and I hear the timer is up. Thank you. Okay. And the next speaker, speaker is uh, Mentor. I am a mentor. Uh, I'm his translator. I should have said that in English. Yom, yeah. I'm Lucy. This is company. We, no, but you know, it's fractal. No, but it's trigon. No, but hello. No, but you can bash one or the telegraph. No, but I don't know. Some mentor, but I'll do. So one of the some of the companies that he already mentioned the names are these. As you can see, I'm not repeating them because mentor already did. For no, no, but you know, it's company fractal. So we're at the service. Me, crisis me web development. Edhe uh, website normal pak aplikacione që janë kryesisht në web, që kanë bëjnë me klienta. So Fractano is an interactive agency that uh, builds websites mainly and applications as well and as, as well as uh, end customer uh, requests. Po, uh, njona është telegrafi pikon këto e tjeni në shta është uh, news portal pak ma i pamshin të shqiptarët e Saudi. That's, that's a, this is a new portal that was one of the first in, in Kosovo that started. It was, uh, it was developed and designed by a mentor himself. This is, this is his favorite company and it's called Trigonom, which does uh, uh, interaction uh, gaming and uh, interactive design games. iOS, Android or Facebook. So it just uh, so Trigonom builds games into Facebook, iOS, and Android. Just I am this all break character. I mean, can any staff should Google. My name is just more than one summer Google. You know, can try it up. But as you know, Bokater, it's a daring pass maximum. And the chat to me now. So he has a policy inside uh, Trigonom that he wants as little staff as possible, and he gets stressed when there are five people, which is the maximum we can have as a team members. Uh, this is a, a, 
Albanian Alphabet, which was one of the best selling and most most active uh, app in the App Store. Çu ko në shtani aplikacion i mirë për shqiptarë se të mija shqiptarëve në larg jakanisë mësu anglisht ma përpara se sa shqip. Se s'ka pas një aplikacion tjetër se për mi mësu shkronja. This one skyrocketed from the Albanian diaspora who started their kids started to learn Albanian language before the, uh, to using the app because they were initially using uh, a language they were born in the place they were born. Kjo është faktikisht çu do këtë aplikacion i mrena është pak ka gamification ka me tri, tri yje për me vlerësu që ato së cilin uh, fëmi që janë i sënë së shkronjat. This are some of the screenshots from the app that uh, it, uh, it walks through all the process of the whole kids learning the language starting from the basic to the more advanced level. Uh, që ashtë interesant në shta kur ka dole alfabeti shqip u gë ka pas shumë të anlocat se na që abojmë që që i shtym lojat edhe aplikacione tona është që e qojmë një PR artikull në Telegraf, una që Telegrafin veç e njojmë, edhe na e gëna bo, po edhe kua e në jetë për shambu që e gëna bo edhe ato si portal në, po edhe në portal e tjera edhe që ashtu mas një njerëzit e morin vesh për qatë e aplikacion, edhe që ajo mas një na hypë në App Store në top si në kitra. So one of the, how, his marketing strategies and how to promote an app once he builds them is that he ends up developing the websites for the all biggest newest portals and then once he launches an app he uses this new portal connection to promote the app and so in that case he doesn't have to pay for this and gets all the, the traffic for the, for the app. Po që ka u konë shumë interesant është për shumë alfabeti që ka mri me hyp në top education app store në Zvicër. So që u konë që që Rade aplikacion po që kjena shumë tja sforo për më stynë o kjena mri me dark part. So it ended up that one of the applications, the, the alphabet, ended up being the best selling, top 10 best selling app in Switzerland, Swiss uh, app store, oh. which is uh, with uh, an app with a foreign language, uh, yeah. Uh, ne si këtu dikon që kjena mri në edhe në Play Store në Android, shumë shvejti kjena pas 50 mi shkarkime, që kjena po mas një kjena për këthy aplikacionin e njëjt në gjutë tjera, veç që kjena... So they replicated the success and they started building the application in the foreign languages and they oh. have uh, over 50,000, uh, uh, 50K downloads for, for each of them, minimum downloads. Po, kjo për shumë që to jenë disa aplikacionet që na i kena pënu, që mas një edhe i kena repliku në gjutë tjera, edhe kjo është për shumë për një që shorë që i kena dhe në free kretë aplikacionet dhe në qatë ko jenë mobilizu kretë shqiptarë bashk për një downloadu që ato loja pa pages. Also, oh, usually, yeah, usually in the first of June, which is International Kids Day, they release all the apps for free, and that's how they accelerate and grow. Na si kompanija na dëntu pa e kjo shumë zdi sa miliona. Jo, jo, jo. I have to translate this because, you know, the foreign guests might think that he just says something. Po, qka është, qka kret kjo që shja ganisë është faktikisht për i saj doje saj luci? është që na si kompani për gjimje të rejtës marojnë a websajta me flash këtë një herë që i kena fitu të disa atë borësa. One of the most popular games that started this whole process is Halutsi, which is a bounce bounce jump game that started. But the previous joke was that when they released the apps for free, they lose actually millions of dollars, which is not true. Po, për me, faktikisht për me kry një loj nuk është qas letë. Po nuk është që na i sam, po është kër e puna një doj për vete, nuk i deadline. Kër s'ki deadline, s'mon është me kry kër që atë doj. Dhe zakon ishtë të përshamu, lojat, plët lojat ka andë për votë, jenë me miliona që s'dalin kër asë në eftora, nuk mundën mi pa kërkush. E na që ka kena po, faktikisht e kena qit një deadline. Kena thonë me dhejt maj, po dojna me qutë gjithë shush alucin në Facebook, edhe na e patëm qit që të postarë, që njerëzit me pritë because they are building the games and there is no client request to build the game and they don't have kind of internal deadline, so the game is never ending. But then they push themselves to put, a de to put an announcement online to say like, let's say three months from now the game will be finished, so then they pressure themselves on to finish the game before the deadline is coming. Edhe njërësit mas një janë nësën shumë e pri që ato dhe të mojnë e nësë kishëm shumë kohë, se fakti i lam 15 ditë vetjet për me kry lojën. Edhe që ka kena bona e kena qumë edhe i të maj, po na i shumë pionira, kështu nuk dishë mas që shë funcionan në Facebook për me qit një loj, edhe që e kena bo e kena qit në Facebook si një artë vishë për veti sa me të stu, edhe që e kena bo e kena qit një password që me të stu një artë vishë për veti. So what they did is like they started to develop the first level of the game from the four seasons, they decided to die to only one season, and they announced it on Facebook as a trailer with a password protected. So 
so people could get like you know um, which method is super way to test to, make to sure test how people react to the to the game that is public but is password protected and then you only pretty you know fucking is the jet link on facebook and then oh trick type as an shumer that my doyen and hide a pin on me do it could upon us now to choose me password so we should me do it doyen so when they announced in 10th of may it was password protected and people found the link but they couldn't play the game and then it was created kind of a buzz around there and the kyo mas ne ja nisi mu mu pero pas to si viral që edhe presioni mas ne jarrë dhe të nan zyre qysh është pasvorti qysh është pasvorti e lëpshin pasvorti në krejt na qat pasvorti nuk ke kallëzëshëm përveç që normal një oni bëjke shumë presion këtë gjë aktiv për shembull qysh është pasvorti së pata qare pa i kallëzu edhe kyo e boni mas ne një një tweet e çoj që për afërsisht nuk e kallëzoj pasvortin sakto për afërsisht so yeah, so I just told the story about how they launched because uh, in that um, it is actually a personal relationship with Mentor because when uh, I, I reached to him to ask him what the hell is the password and uh, he, he didn't want to tell in the first but then at the end he ended up telling me and, uh, and then he ended up saying the different keyword for the password which we got viral as well. And then I found that the password for this is actually a lot of the password in the past year. There is a password you put up a viral number Facebook and just kind of a comment and here's the time it's in So they, they announced the password and then so only people who know the password they could play the game So it was kind of a game inside the game. So the people who had password they, there was a game how to find the password to play the game so <laughs> So they did the first level because they couldn't be on time to finish the game, so they did the first level and they made it so extremely hard so people actually could not pass the second level, which was never done. Kështu që njërëzët janë njësër me thirë, hej, s'mo muna me krydojnë, a jeni të mujtë ju me krydojnë, a thamë, po mërë e qyshë e këna kryd dherim fund. So the people started calling and saying like, hey, well, uh, does this game ever, the level first gets ever done? And they would say like, yeah, of course, here are the screenshots, I mean, we do it, we, we can finish, why can't you finish the game? Tani mas nina e qumë pak ma, ma e letumë pak lojnë, dhe thamë, okej, këna letësu, dhe tash muni me lojnë. Nështëta, kishëm skip se nuk kena shumë ko Okay, mas nina e këna bo që tatë një itën për Facebook i ka post dikon të rrëtë një qenë mi juzera që e kanë duit. So the game was attracting 100,000 gamers who were playing the game. Facebook, po mas nina një itën e këna bo për aja së andret, ka shumë sen e mrena që janë interesant, që do një me provo dhe jo. Shumica prej juzera ka dhe prej rusis, slovenis, indis. So some of the users come all over from Russia, Slovenia, India, Germany, Ukraine and all over the world. These are the games that... Por, mas nina e këna kuptu që me maru që si loja të mloja si alu që që në kasga të tri vjetës këna mujtë shu që këna thonë po bojna loja ma thjeshta. Dhe që kjo është një prej ty në thjeshta. So they start developing games and then they reached up to 2.7 million downloads in iOS and Android all together from Pristina. Yes. This is great that uh, we have um, two studios here in, in uh, Pristina and hopefully it will grow after this hyper talk and uh, we also have a kind of a hyper Q&A afterwards so please ask some questions and now please welcome on stage Maestro Simon Piveta. Hi, uh, the last time I was on a stage I was eating a pudding but today maybe I make something more productive than that. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about uh, actually Arduino and microcontrollers, but just briefly. Um, I came here three days ago and I saw just the city with the most young people I ever saw in my life and I, here also at uh, Thermokist there are so many talented people. Uh, and I also fell in love for the stand of J-coders doing their awesome stuff and also the other stand uh, with also these crazy inventions. Uh, but I still broke this uh, this talk because um, this this kind of mindset, uh, which is also shared with the game community, which is uh, tinkering and uh, being hacking in uh, what you do, not not just learning from the cookbook, but uh, learning to see on your own way how you can get through stuff, um, is something that I believe should be in the basic education of kids and not just in courses like this, which I love but I believe it should be in actually the, 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 the school. Um, I was 20 when I saw for the first time this one. Who can recognize it? 
what it is. Okay, this is a microcontroller, this is a, a little computer, it can't do much, but you can just put some wires on it, you can connect uh, an LED, you can connect motors, you can then program it with a computer with a really easy language, and you can get this, this moment when you f finally wrote something in the computer and see something happen in the, the real world. You write some, some sentences, and then you see lights blinking. Then you get a motor moving, and you start to build what you want. I mean, you can go completely, go completely freely with your mind and just get in this hacking space where you're just trying out and doing stuff, and um, you're actually rid of boundaries when you're doing this. You're not an, an, anymore just playing in the screen. And uh, I show you an example of a game made with this system. Uh, this is Line Wobbler. It was also at Amaze uh, the last year. Um, this game is amazing. It's uh, this piece here is just like um, a spring, and you control this game. And the game monitor is just this LED stripe. So imagine you have this dot, and you move it around the space. So it's one one-dimensional game. It doesn't even need a computer because it's always all, everything is running from this little chip. It's just programming a LED stripe and getting a controller working on it. So this is this is this kind of hacking I, I, I go for, and I hope that um, people get more aware about technology uh, in the sense of they don't fear uh, what's inside our devices. They, 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 they learn something. Therefore, uh, England and Germany uh, already have a, a program. This is the BBC microchip, uh, micro bit, sorry. Uh, it's, um, also a controller like the Arduino, but it's built for schools, for learning, and they are going to use this in uh, lessons with teenagers. So you can just plug stuff and try around and get in the, into this, this circuit world um, where the basic knowledge nowadays is not anymore the one, that, the, the one you had a lot of time ago where uh, just an electrical engineer could actually start doing something with uh, electricity. Now we got these microcontrollers with micro microchips, so it's more software based and everyone can get into this. And Germany also has got this uh, variant, which is still not on the market. And uh, it's uh, also made on the same principle, so that it's easy to solder and easy to work on it. And the programming language is based on this uh, cubes you just put on the screen, so you're not even going to write. They made it also in German. I hope they got a, an international version of it. And uh, it's super easy uh, talk just for kids. And they're thinking, thinking to use it in schools for kids uh, uh, eight plus. So really small. And as they, they are really small, you, you're <coughs> they haven't got to be t touch freaks. It's uh, for everyone in the classroom. Um, and I believe it's not even going to be boring because it's a really playful world where you um, you just play around with electricity and it's awesome. <laughs> and uh, I have the, 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 the master of disaster here, it's Reed Gazala. Uh, this guy in uh, the 60s when he was 13 year old uh, invented or may, maybe discovered uh, what is called circuit bending. He just put his fingers in some radios and uh, the radio started making weird sounds. It was not anymore giving out the normal signal. You didn't hear your voices. You were hearing like <laughs> And then he understood, okay, I can do something out of this. And uh, he started his uh, uh, circuit bending culture in which he j takes toys like this. This one says, uh, has got letters on it and he says, worlds. So he just get inside with his finger, touch at it while, while it was on while he was playing sounds and, and, and just so, okay, where, where it's making weird noises and he started soldering uh, buttons on it and the buttons you see here are not in the original game, uh, um, in the original toy and he was making crazy sounds after this and he also says you don't need any knowledge to do this you just get inside, there is just these few rules, open, touch and, uh, and actually what you need is just a bunch of kids junk and with this you get a lot of tools you can use also to work with. This is then the process of finding out the points. You get to these points, you just touch, it's making noise and it's awesome and you just start 
soldering, getting some noises and say, oh, I can put a knob here between these solder points I found and you're getting something. Every kid could do this. And, and this is something that would take away the fear of, fear of it because I still remember him breaking a keyboard at my place in the, in the kitchen and my flatmate just looks at me if I was an alien and doing something completely crazy. And uh, in my town there is a, um, a workshop for kids really similar to uh, J. Cole as a principle, but more condensed, which actually fits both elements together. And uh, it's, um, they are w taking electrical waste and uh, they are uh, destroying all the children toys to make some crazy things. But if you don't are into technology, you still can do cute stuff. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker cannot be here. Um, she's at E3, what is a very, very big um, games show in LA and a conference as well. And um, it's Agnesa Beluga and uh, she's the... F Pardon? Belego? Not Beluga. Where's Beluga again? Something to eat. Ah, okay. <laughs> Billy Goom, sorry, and um, she's the founder and game designer of um, Zombie Soup. And um, yeah, let's um, watch the video. She prepared the video and let's roll the film. Hello, 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 Dokutek, hello, Amaze, hello, beautiful people. I am Agnesa Belego, and I work at Zombie Soup's newly established game department as its game director and as one of its developers. I am super stoked and inherently sad that I cannot be there this year and I cannot join you in celebration of the sparks of the gaming industry in our little country. And you know, when I decided that I would chase after the dream of the gaming industry, I remember my friends and family would tell me to, to uh, find something better to do with my time. Like for example, how about find a steady job? How about get a steady income? How about dealing with something that's more serious and not as childish as the gaming industry? But that's not what it was for me, or then that's not what it is. That's not why I joined or why I strive to set a foundation of this industry in Kosovo. I always thought of this industry as the rest of the world. Um, I could jump into these universes and the shoes of and shoes and lives of these characters that I could not be in daily in my daily life. Like, no, we, we can't travel the galaxies like in Mass Effect, or I was not born blind like in Beyond Eyes. But there was something about that level of empathy created between me and this fictional character's world and universe that struck me as incredible. Even games like this war of mine that explore perspectives that we're all too familiar with, you know, being in a war-torn country, um, we, they sought to bring these experiences and these stories to the rest of the world. And I think that's what's most powerful about this medium. I joined because I wanted to be part of the force that created these experiences and in interacting with them, they opened the player's heart and eyes to what they could not potentially fathom beforehand or think to explore. With VR making an interest in the industry, I think this experience is, uh, well, this whole process is even more empowered to flesh out these experiences and truly immerse the public into what it feels like to be in this, in, in these innumerable, virtually endless number of shoes. And I was fortunate to make an entry in the industry when I was working for, when I moved to the US and I started working for Electronic Arts as a game designer and I also finished school here in the US um, as part of the Interactive Entertainment Academy in, in the University of Central Florida. But I think what I've constantly been reassured of is that this medium is not stopping its growth. This medium is continuously reaching out to people who are less and less um, sort of paid attention to. But these, th this medium is reaching out to communities that, have, that are locked, to communities that are chastised and sort of tries to open people's eyes into these people's lives so that they, we can relate to them and we can have some form of empathy for them and understand them from their perspective for a change. For example, the, 
Uh, for example, Life is Strange. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of this game, but that's sort of what it does. It, it puts you in the eyes of a teenager who has the ability to um, manipulate time and space. And what ends up happening is the entire story is not just an experience of um, you manipulating time and trying to, you know, finish the game, but also you get to know all these characters and you get to have an insight into their lives and their issues and understand them from a deeper level than just um, sort of hearing about them or just having somebody tell you about them because you're so immersed in the game You feel like you're this main character and you feel like these char these other people around you are your responsibility Not a lot of mediums can do this Not a lot of mediums give you the power of somebody else's life in your hands and make you feel what it's like to have that sort of responsibility Even if at the end of the day you can just press the reset button and everything is fine and, You know everything is happy. Everyone is happy and nobody's sad um, but yeah, if you are, the, the thing about this is, like, the one last thing that I want to say is that, um, while I was fortunate to move to the U.S. and sort of make an entry into the industry, and now I'm back in Kosovo working for Zombie Soup, you guys have it right at your fingertips. A maze is right there. People that, whose life and profession now revolves around these experiences are there within your reach. So talk to as many people as you can, play as many games as you can, and then see how you can give your own contribution to this giant and incredible industry. And if you are interested, hit me up at agnesa.zombiesoup.com and let's start a conversation. Let's start having a discussion about how you could contribute to this medium and join us in creating a foundation for this industry in Kosovo. Um, thank you for this opportunity, Doc Tech. Uh, enjoy this awesome event. Thank you, Ipco Foundation, for making it possible for me to record a video. I hope to hear from you guys soon. All right, bye. I mean, use the opportunity and go to her and ask her and also go to... Where's, where's mentor? Here. Yes. I mean, probably you also have to offer some jobs, right? Or internship or something like that. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. The amazing independent game world. Um, as a founder and festival director of the Amaze Festival, I'm going to play a lot of games and it was great to work as well with Riker together and make this amazing selection here. Uh, hopefully you had the chance to play all these games. Uh, Cricket is a very nice game. It's a silly game, but it's a cool game, what you can play with two people. And then Word After Word is a very intellectual game where you can kind of uh, competitive um, gameplay where you have to put, after an adver ad 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 adjective, you have to put a noun. Um, then Flat Hero is a very, very re reactional game where you have to have special skills, but it's very, very fun. It's also social, you entertain with other people. So VR Pigeon, Simon did a very good talk. It's an amazing, humiliated game. So it's very hard to say for me. You, you hu hu humiliated game. And uh, Little Miss Laser is uh, also awesome, so you have to shout, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this is something what is very, very nice, it's silly, completely silly, you have to kill that, uh, cats, you could destroy the whole world at the end, but it's fun. So we have also Disco Discomfort, what is very, very cool, because in a way, um, everybody feels a little bit uncomfortable, not comfortable in clubs, and uh, Raiko, it was Raiko's choice, and he discovered it, and uh, it's a personal game. And we have Sense VR, what is kind of a collider game, which brings together different kind of aspects of uh, artistic design, and as well because I mean it's uh, made or, uh, or it's it's working together with a comic artist is very very nice. And then the history of a gaze, with what shows a little bit the evolution of how we look at things. And um, VR is actually, I think, the last thing how we look at, maybe not. And uh, everything all together are independent games. And uh, independent games are diverse, experimental, weird, and of course subversive. So we can change the world with all these great games. And um, I, I really think uh, that authorship in games is the most important thing. You can tell stories in there. It's not just interaction. And even when the interaction can be a story. So what makes everything so good in this uh, independent game scene is the community. The community is international, welcoming, helpful, reflected, open-minded, inspiring, blind, blowing and very experimental. And we have festivals. We have festivals around the world. You just can connect. I know you guys have not 
I mean, it's very hard for you to get a visa to go to all these events, but give it a try. We're going to send you invitations and you're always invited to come and share and as well to learn. And we have game jams, game jams you can do online. You have Ludum there, you have uh, seven days first person shooter jam, you have the Berlin mini jam, isolation jam, splash jam, game, uh, global game jam, a very, very well-known game jam with a 48 hours game jam and it's all over the world and just on, on different sites. I think they have right now 450 sites at the same time, same topic. And it's pretty cool, so experiment and meet people. And we have engines, most of them are for free. Just use them, do something, just bring it into. I mean, make something meaningful or make something stupid, something what makes fun, what entertains and also has an impact. And I think games are an art form, and I don't think it is. And because it brings a lot of things together, writing, research, animation, coding, architecture, music, game design, UX design, acting, and sound design, and even more. And I think, you can use this hashtag, it's just for you. Make games causable and make positive chaos all over the place where you are. Use the technology, put it with your thoughts and bring it out to the people. This is your thing, this is your tool. And thank you very much. This were the Hyper Talks.